Hello and welcome to my channel. This is episode 3 of my cycling stories. I've also got new haircut. Last time. With Mark's grade around 30%. Which I didn't know of because Google Maps doesn't show grades. I thought he's just not so stupid. This time. He looks at me, sees my trekking bike and my cheap cycling jersey and asks. Do you need new bike by any chance? I was quiet for a bit and then I said. Yeah, I'm thinking to buy one. What's your name? Barry. Yours? Matias. Where are you going? I'm going home from work. Where are you working? I'm working in bike shop. You said you can get me a new road bike. Yeah, we are cleaning storage in bike shop. For how much? Around 800 euros. Light and green, we start cycling and keep talking. 10 minutes passed, we reach next town, exchange numbers and go separate ways. I'm cycling for a while on the flat road when suddenly four guys overtake me on the road bikes. I put in hardest gear and forcing myself to stay with them. After 20 seconds I was going 45 km per hour and my camp was probably like 130. So I couldn't keep up with them and get dropped. I felt bad after I was dropped. This bike was the reason why I couldn't bike with them. From that moment I knew that I really need new bike, especially road bike, in order to keep up with those guys. I wasn't even halfway through my ride and I reached first steep climb at 10% edge grade, which got maximum at 40%. It was like I would hit a wall. I slowly reached top and next 40 seconds was downhill. You know what comes after downhill or uphill. I didn't think that this 7km segment is so steep because it didn't look that bad on map. 40 minutes later I reached top, take fast photo while passing the lake and 10 minutes after that, another one at the highest point of our county, Port Piconic, which is 870 meters above sea level. After 72 kilometers, I arrive home, get off bike and lay on my bed. I was so wasted. Next 14 days, I do a few more long rides and keep talking with Barry over phone about what bike parts should I have. Since I didn't know what's the difference in bike parts, he was suggested what should I take for this price, so I agreed to almost everything. After a lot of talking, he finally built my bike and we set day and place where to meet. Of course, we met at my house. I saw him driving small Renault Clio for a second. I was asking myself, where's the bike? Since the car was so small, I was expecting to see my bike above the car. He turned on my yard and I finally see my bike inside his car. I was like, why is this bike so small? But after he stopped and put it outside, I realized that it was normal size. He gave me special cycling shoes and I put them on. That first feeling when I put those shoes on was like I was wearing high heels backwards. It was so weird feeling. Now it was finally time to get on bike. He holds bike tightly and I get on it. Clipping pedals was something new for me. I tried a few times to clip shoes in and out before he let me go. After a few minutes of practicing, I finally go around the block. I still remember that feeling when pedaling upwards felt really strange to me. It was for shifting and braking. I come back to my house and I was happy as never before. My smile was like a Grinch. I get the money and pay him. Bike and shoes together cost me 720 euros which was cheap. I met this guy totally random with pure luck on intersection or the red light. He was even working bike shop. I got lower price on bike. If you ask me, it was higher force who wanted me that I become cyclist. By the way, yesterday was my 3 year anniversary for having this road bike. First ride with new road bike felt so weird to get used to, especially the shifting part. Third day, I planned a long ride on a slightly extended ride that I did a month ago. I go downhill on the same hill that I made my top speed. I reached town Aydushchina, which is 5 km further than town Vipava, where I was last time. For some reason I thought that Vipava is further than Aydushchina, so I go in another direction. After a few minutes of riding, I see this sign. I was so frustrated because I thought I knew that Vipava is further away from home, but I was wrong. I decided that I'll turn left, so I turn left and I'm going above highway on long flat road. I reached corner and from there I was going on never ending uphill road. 
I was already lost and had no idea where I am. I had phone but no data on it and no offline maps so I couldn't know where I am. I finally see a road going downhill and since I was in the middle of nowhere because I didn't see any sign of life in the last 30 minutes I pushed as hard as I can. I'm going sony speed in this blind corner on unknown territory and then to be continued. Thanks for watching. If you like my story, click that like button, subscribe to my channel or comment down below. See ya.